today we will start uh, chapter 2, uh, classification. Um, I will try to explain the um, main content of uh, chapter 2. Uh, in the first uh, lecture, I uh, already uh, said that uh, logic is the uh, science of evaluating arguments. That is, logicians are concerned with sorting out arguments into good ones and bad ones. And we are going to study um, the techniques of evalu evaluating arguments invented by logicians throughout the semester. Um, but today, uh, before we understand you know, these uh, techniques of evaluating uh, arguments, we need to understand the concept of argument first. An argument, by definition, is a set of sentences that consists of the premise part and the conclusion part. So make sure that the, you know, an argument is a set of sentences. Okay. There, there must be at least two sentences in an argument. So just a single sentence does not make an argument. You need at least two sentences to make an argument. An argument must be divided into two parts. The premise part, premises are the reasons or the ground or the evidences that you take to support the conclusion of the argument. The conclusion is your belief or the claim. Okay? And the premises are one you take to support the conclusion. So every argument must have those two parts in it. Um, I mean we, will, we will talk more about what an argument is and how to analyze it later. Okay? But notice first, for today's class, what is important is that an argument consists of Sentences. Now, what is a sentence? A sentence consists of words. And words expresses concepts. Okay? So uh, that's where the, the textbook starts. Okay? Uh, an argument consists of sentences. Sentences, a sentence consists of words. Words expresses concepts. And so concepts are the basic building blocks. Okay? So uh, that's where the textbook starts. Okay? They, the textbook talks about, in chapter 2, concepts. Now what is, what is a concept? Concepts are what we use in classifying objects. Concepts are basically uh, the way you classify things in the world. The, the most basic uh, type of cognitive act is we take an object to belong to a concept. Okay? That's, that's the, uh, the simplest kind of thought that you can have, judgment you can have. Basically, it says an object O is F. Okay. So for example, when I say this, this is a pen, I'm using the concept pen to classify this object as a certain kind. That's the most basic kind of a thought or judgment. So uh, a concept, concepts are what we use in order to classify object in the world into various kinds. Okay? We group things, we classify things, and concepts are the tools that we use to do that. Okay, so that's, uh, that's concept. So for example, the concept cat, we say, applies to cats. 
On the other hand, the concept dog applies to dogs. Okay? Uh, concepts, so different concepts apply to different objects. And we say that cats are the reference of the concept cat. In the textbook, you will see the expression referent. And that means just this, that uh, uh, the reference of a concept is just the object that the concept applies to. Okay? So of course, so dogs, dogs are the, the reference of the concept dog. Okay? So different concepts have different reference. They refer to different objects. They apply to different objects. Of course, there are other expressions that refer to objects in the world. Um, especially, for example, proper names are other examples that refer that are also uh, that also refer to objects. But proper names names refer to singular objects. Okay, singular objects. Um, for example. Um, George Washington, this, this name refers to uh, a single person, particular object in the world. Other than names that refer to persons, we, will also, we also have names that refer to places. For example, Mount Everest okay, refers to a particular mountain. Um, but, uh, the words that express concepts are different from names in that uh, concepts refer to a group of objects, not a single object. As you can see here, right? the concept cat refers to not a single cat, but a number of cats. Okay? Every cat uh, is the referent of the concept cat. So that's, uh, that's how uh, proper names uh, differ from uh, predicates that express concepts. Okay? Proper names refer to single objects, but uh, uh, the predicates that express concepts uh, refer to a group of objects. Okay? okay, so that's concept. We can uh, um, we can comp compare concepts okay. um, and we use these words uh, genus, genus and species are the terms that we use to compare concepts. For example, comp let's compare two concepts animal and dog. Now you can uh, uh, immediately see that there is a, such a relation between animal and dog that is stated in this sentence, that all dogs are animals. So the, we say, in this case, the concept of dog belongs to the concept of animal. Okay? The concept of animal includes more objects or is more inclusive. It, it includes more, applies to more objects than the concept dog. dog right? So the concept animal is more inclusive compared to the concept dog. The concept dog belongs to the concept animal. So when that happens, we say the concept animal is the genus concept, while the concept dog is the species concept. So you can see that you know, the, uh, when the genus concept is the concept animal, there are other species concept than the concept dog. For example, the concept cat is the species, is another species of the concept animal. So this is just a, a relative term, genus uh, and species is a relative term. That, that is, for example, when you compare the concept dog with the concept 
let's say, Chihuahua. Okay? When you cons compare those two concepts, this is the genus. And the concept Chihuahua is a species of that. Okay? So genus, the concept genus and species is just a relative term that we use to compare concepts. Okay? We can say the genus concept is a bit higher than the species. Okay? Higher than the, uh, than the species. So this is just the term that we use to compare concepts. Um, now, now we can uh, we can think of uh, not just a can concept but a, a system of concepts. Okay. Uh, where a small child, okay, small child probably uh, classify everything in the world. There's just two kinds. Let's say things that uh, he or she likes and things he or she doesn't like. Okay? Uh, a very small child would classify uh, things in, in those two kinds. But when, uh, when the child grows up, uh, the way uh, she classifies things um, in the world gets more complicated. There are a number of different concepts and which compose a system of con uh, concepts. Um, and um, there are um, rules of a proper classification. That is, rules of a proper system, appropriate system of concepts. And we can use an example to, to il illustrate the idea. Let's say, for example, um, the domain of object is just uh, the object in the world that you like to classify. Uh, let's say the, the domain of object is people. Okay? You like to uh, classify and group people into various kinds. And there are a number of different ways we can go about doing that. We can classify people by their nationality, or by their religion, or race, sex, income, and so on. I mean, we can adopt a, a different system of classification depending on what our interest is. For example, you know, for um, for sociological research, sociological purpose. Uh, classifying people by their religion is maybe important, relevant. Um, or, you know, by, uh, for f classifying people by their income may be relevant for some other purposes. So there are uh, a number of different uh, classificatory systems we can adopt depending on what our purpose or interest is. But the, uh, when you adopt a, a system of classification, uh, there are rules that you have to follow. And the first rule uh, is, is this. A good classification must be mutually exclusive and jointly exhaustive. Now, uh, it may seem very difficult, but uh, it is not. Let's see what this, this means. Uh, mutually exclusive is there is no overlap. Jointly exhaustive means nothing in the domain is left out. I think we can, we can understand these ideas by looking at an example. For example, if we classify people, say, uh, let's say this, this is the, uh, the classificatory system that we ad adopt. That is, we classify people uh, according to this system. Either Christians, Buddhists, or Baptists. Okay? Now, if you look at this system of classification, you can notice that this classificatory system is neither mutually exclusive. Now, that is, uh, 
it is not the case that there is no overlap. Let's see. Which ones are overlapping? For example, Christians and Baptists, they can overlap. That is, uh, one and the same person can be both Christian and a Baptist. That means it's overlapping. So it's not mutually exclusive. So that's bad. And it happens that this system is not jointly exhaustive either. That is, there may be a person who is not Christian, who is not Buddhist, who is not a Baptist, but for example, an Islam, okay, uh, would belong to neither one of any one of these uh, concepts. So uh, there are people who are left out according to this system of classification. So this uh, system is not jointly exhaustive. So it's a bad, defective um, system. So a good system of uh, classification should be mutually exclusive and jointly exhaustive. That's the first rule. Second rule, let's look at the second rule. Um, oh, let's skip. Let's skip this, and uh, I will come back to that. Uh, but let's look at the second rule of classification first. The second rule says classify the domain by the essential property. Now, what what is uh, what is to classify a domain by uh, by the essential property? Um, we can consider an example that is not uh, a classification by the essential property. For example, people who are in this room um, and people who are not in this room. Okay? Um, there are actually me and another uh, cameraman here. So there are two of us here. And everybody else belongs to the other people who are not in this room. And this is mutually exclusive and jointly exhaustive. Yes, so it passes the first test, right? You can check that out, right? I mean, every people is, uh, belongs to either that or that. Okay, I, as I said, <laughs> there are two people who belong to this uh, first category. And everybody else belongs to that uh, later ca category. But so it's mutually exclusive uh, and jointly exhaustive. Uh, there is nobody who uh, belongs to both of these categories. Okay, so uh, this, this system uh, of classification um, passes the first test. But notice that. Um, th it's not a classification by essential property. There is no essential difference between these two groups. Or to put it another way, there is no essential common commonality uh, among people who belong to the uh, same class. Um, so I mean, this is uh, this this system of classification, we can say, is classification by a very superficial property, not by its essential property. Right? So it's not a good, uh, uh, good uh, system of classification. In the textbook, uh, there are, you will find uh, many other uh, examples both in the uh, main context, uh, main text, and uh, in the quizzes and exercise problems, many other examples. And in, in the lectures, I can only give you uh, um, very love guidelines. So uh, I hope that you go back to uh, 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 the textbook and start read uh, chapter two. Okay, um, there is uh, one final thing that I need to 
uh, I want to talk about in chapter 2. Um, the author uh, spends some time to uh, explain uh, these concepts, abstract and concrete. Um, again, this is, uh, these terms are what we can use uh, to compare concepts. That is, there are, there are more abstract concepts and there are more concrete concepts. Okay. Abstract, concrete term, uh, contrast is what we can use to uh, uh, classify concepts, compare concepts. And abstract here, uh, you can understand abstract as meaning the same thing as ignoring the difference. Okay. So for example, in order to classify both cats and dogs as animals. We ignore the difference between cats and dogs. I mean, cats and dogs are, of course, different. Okay? They behave differently, they look differently, but in order to uh, classify all of them, cats and dogs, all of them as animals, we have to ignore their difference and focus on what they have in common. Okay? So if, in order to apply a concept, you have to ignore more uh, aspects or characteristics than the concept is more a more abstract concept. So that's, that's how you understand the concept abstract. Okay? You, abstract means you ignore the differences for the purpose of focusing on the common aspect. Okay. And there are more abstract concepts um, and more abstract concepts are you have to ignore more aspects, more characteristics to apply the concept. And we can order concepts by their abstractness. For example, uh, we can order these four concepts uh, in the relation of starting from concrete object to move to mo uh, more abstract concepts. Chihuahua is the most concrete I mean, in, uh, in this list. Okay? In this list, Chihuahua is uh, the most concrete uh, concept. It applies to only a small uh, domain of objects, Chihuahua. Now dogs, when you move to dog, uh, the concept dog, you, you move to a more abstract concept. You ignore the difference between Chihuahua and, I don't know, Shepherd, to look all of them as dogs, okay? and so on. Okay? Mammals, the concept mammal is more abstract than the concept dog. The concept animal is the most abstract concept of them all. Okay. So uh, to look at things as animals or non-animals, that's the most abstract way of classifying objects. So um, again, I mean that's the these are the concepts and terminologies introduced uh, in the textbook. And you will see more detailed explanation in the, in the textbook. So read the textbook and do the uh, homeworks assigned. Um, and then uh, you do the uh, exercise problems and submit. Okay, uh, okay that's for the chapter two.